This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by Blockchain.com um, 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 um. All right, so for those of you waiting to hear me say something incriminating, your moment is now. Actually, I'm not sure how incriminating it is, but it's more politically incorrect thought than usual. Vis-a-vis the government and the New Hampshire free stater consensus, such as it is. It's a subtle, nuanced difference, but one that might not be super safe for me to articulate. I am in, con- in agreement with the conventional libertarian wisdom that peaceable action is the best path to liberty. But here's a cautionary note regarding that philosophy, which I share. What, if anything, would have happened to Russia in 1941 or France in 1940 if the German government had had a rebel movement, a violent rebel movement to deal with from say 1935 on or especially from 1939 on every government person out there can probably uh, agree with me that the Nazis would have had a shorter reach should that have been the case they can agree with me that that would have been a good thing Violent rebellions are not good for delivering liberty, but if waged in a relatively honorable manner, they can limit a bad government's ability outside its borders. If the United States government had to contend with something similar, something I do not advocate, it might have the effect of limiting the government's ability or will to aggress overseas. I guess Gandhi said that violent rebellion At least he indicated that violent rebellion uh, is often better than no rebellion. And that it was better than peaceable rebellion in some circumstances. He said basically, individually, it's better for you to commit violence if violence is in your heart than to commit civil disobedience if you're doing it as a cloak for impotence. I'm not even willing to go as far as Gandhi. I tend to like the Hippocratic Oath where, you know, above all, do no harm. In many cases, doing nothing is the best thing to do compared to uh, doing a lot of harm. Nevertheless, it's important to be fair to the advocates of uh, non-aggressive, violent rebellion. I'm not sure that the answer to this question uh, drops against them. The question, would America be able to practically enslave the world if it had a an honorable, violent rebellion to contend with inside its borders. That question does spark a follow-on question, and that is, would a violent rebellion be more successful, uh, have more potential at stopping the American invasions than peaceable uh, peaceable, uh, uh, resistance? That I don't know, and it would be interesting to see some historical statistics about that sort of thing from around the world. Certainly the liberty folk and the true liberals were able to uh, limit or forestall the Syria invasion by Americans through peaceable activity. They did no harm, not a single person had to die because of their activism as far as I know. And yet they accomplished their mission. I do not think, I don't know of a case in American history where violent rebels have been able to make that claim in the United States. Blockchain.info's free Bitcoin web wallet. Chock full of privacy and security features. Two-factor authentication. A second password for sending coins. They never have control over your passwords or your coins. They don't even require your personal info. Get yours today at blockchain.com. Um, 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 um.